I've got 75 miles on the Evo at this point, so I figured it's time to do a more comprehensive review. Um, first of all, let's talk about the board. The board is a, a foam board, unlike what I previously had, uh, which was fiberglass. I have to say, I actually like the foam board quite a lot. It has made it easier for my son because there's soft edges everywhere. Um, you're not as worried about little teeny bumps where on previous boards the paint chips or, or you cause other damage. Uh, so the, the foam board construction actually is, is kind of a winner. Um, like that quite a bit. The, the deck is, is soft um, and feels pretty good. About me, um, I have been riding for almost two years. I have about 22, 2300 miles under my belt. And so this is my second e-foil. The first question is, how does it ride? The answer is pretty simple. It rides very well. The, the foil is stable. Um, it is very, very quiet, especially compared to my previous foil. It is maneuverable, nimble, a uh, good amount of buoyancy in the board, but not too much. It's easy to get up and ride. Um, all in all, I'm very impressed with, with how the board performs. This handle in the front of the board, it is incredibly useful. Basically, when starting, we can just grab our hand right under there and hold on. Putting the board together, as others have said, is very easy. It's modular. The mast just simply steps onto the bottom, spin a couple of screws by hand, uh, <clears throat> and tighten them down by hand, and they, that's done. The kit that I have is the Waydo Flyer Evo Pro Plus. It's the 90 liter board. Um, I have the 35 inch aluminum mast. I have the, the larger battery. The, I have the uh, Voyager C1500 wing and the Voyager uh, C1100 wing. The motor is the 6000 watt motor. I opted for the smaller charger, the 600 watt charger. Let's talk about the controller. The controller is um, very ergonomic. It's, it's nice. It fits your hand quite well. Uh, little indents here. So the, the feel is very, very good. Uh, the functionality is very, very good. The, the trigger pull feels great. It has a lot of throw. The screen, however, isn't great. And what I mean by that is while I can see absolutely everything with no glasses on, in bright sunlight, that screen is very, very difficult to see with polarized lenses, um, if not impossible. I actually look at it kind of under my glasses as I'm riding. That said, it really doesn't bug me that much. I don't really care at any given time exactly how fast I'm going, what the battery level is. I may check it occasionally. So not really a big deal. The overall feel um, is, is really good and that's what I care about probably more than anything else. The settings menus and all the configuration inside of the controller um, are fairly intuitive, easy to get to, um, easy to navigate, easy to make changes. Um, also pretty well laid out. There's a band that comes with the controller. So this band, essentially goes around your arm and the controller connects and snaps to that tethers to the band. This wristband is quite nice. Um, the feel of it is is very very good. The internals here uh, have just a have a very nice soft feel to them. The band also includes as part of it the key that helps you lock the battery in place. So this essentially is used in the battery itself once set in to click in, twist, to lock the battery uh, to the board. So the charger charges the battery at roughly 30% per hour. So in other words, if I've got 20% and I charge it for an hour, I've got 50%. So that's pretty much online with what they have said that it takes three, three and a half hours to charge the battery from empty to full. As far as range on the, the Voyager C1500 wing, um, I rode around quite slowly today for uh, an hour and a half, a little more than 15 miles, um, and had 20% of the battery left. So that essentially equates to being able to ride just under two hours of actual ride time, just under 20 miles of, of actual distance. I weigh about 175, and as I said, I rode slowly, calmly, not aggressively. Yesterday, I rode fast um, and aggressively and burned through half of the battery in uh, 34 minutes. So it just completely depends on how fast and aggressively you ride. Um, the way I see it, you're going to get somewhere between 16 and 20 miles, depending on, on how you ride the board. And then of course, depending on the wing. I do not have a glider wing. I expect that that probably gives you a little bit more range. 
The 35 inch mast seems like a really nice length. My previous board had about a 30 inch mast, but also the motor sat um, up above, it was connected on the mast, whereas this one is in line with the wing. The mast has LEDs on it, which I have turned on. Um, they make a pretty darn cool effect for riding, you know, at dusk or dawn. In my initial assessment, I thought I might switch to shoes because the battery sits on top of the, the board, essentially, as opposed to inside of a compartment. And so there's a, there's a you know, a gap, a, a difference in height between the battery and the board, just slight, but enough to feel it. After a few rides, you know what? I'm not going to switch and wear shoes. I don't like wearing shoes. I understand all the benefits of doing so, but I like to feel better barefoot. The board has a function called flight assist, uh, where it dynamically adjusts throttle to try and keep the board level. Um, I will de dedicate a separate video to that. I have turned it on. Uh, works surprisingly well. I wake up every morning.